Greetings guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this pattern so that you'll be able to turn it into these high-waisted shorts. So, keep watching! <laughs> to make these shorts, you'll need your natural waist circumference, your hip circumference, your hip depth, which is from your waist to your hip, your crotch depth, which is from your waist to your crotch, your thigh circumference, as well as the length that you want these shirts to be. To make the pattern, you'll need pattern paper, a ruler, a French curve, tape measure, scissors, pen and pencil, sharpener and eraser, marker to label, and your measurements. If you don't have the white pattern paper that has a grid on it, you can always use brown paper like I have here. Draw a T in the center of your pattern paper. That's a vertical line like I just drew and a horizontal line like I'm drawing right now. And then on the vertical line, you're going to mark your waist to thigh measurement. Mine was 13, so I am making note of the 13 like you see me doing here. And then I'm going to get my ruler and actually square a line out from both sides of that mark. The right side of the line represents the front of the shorts and the left side of the line represents the back of the shorts. Here, I'm calculating my hip arc, which is hip circumference divided by four. My hip circumference is 36. Divide that by four, you get nine. I'm gonna mark nine on that horizontal line that I drew initially. This is actually the waistline. So I'm doing that on the back and the front of the shorts. The next step is to identify your hip depth and crotch depth. Mine was eight and a half, so I'm marking that on the vertical line as well as my crotch depth, which was 11 and a half. Then I'm going to square out on both sides of the line for the back and front. The hip depth line will become your hip line and the crotch depth line would become your crotch line. So keep that in mind. So what we're doing right now is to make sure that everything is nine inches on all sides. It needs to be even. And then we can go ahead and connect the waistline to the hip line, the crotch line and the thigh line using two vertical lines on both sides. I'm gonna extend my front inseam by dividing my crotch line by four. My crotch line is currently nine inches. I'm dividing that by four, and that gives me a result of two and a quarter. So I am extending my crotch line by two and a quarter. Then I'm going to extend the back inseam by dividing the back crotch line by two. That gives me four and a half, so I'm going to extend out by four and a half. Remember, you need to make these measurements specific to yourself. I'm saying these numbers because I'm talking about my own measurements. So make sure that you're not confusing this with your own size. Extend your thigh lines to meet the crotch lines that we just established. Our next goal is going to be to establish the waistline of the shorts. Divide the waistline into two halves. You're gonna mark that on the waistline and you're also going to mark that on the hip line. Then you're going to use your ruler to connect both lines. Really what we're doing right now is establishing the darts. And for the front of the shorts, we want half inch darts. So that means we're going to mark quarter inches on both sides of that line that we just drew. Your front dart needs to be three inches long. So mark that on that line and then you're going to connect the dart legs to the line. Divide your waist circumference by four and you're gonna basically see how much more do you need to get rid of on the waistline to make sure that it's equal to your waist circumference divided by four. I still need to get rid of one and three quarters of an inch. So I'll divide that by two and that gives me seven eighths. 
So I removed 7 eighths from the out seam and I also removed 7 eighths from the inseam. Our next goal is going to be to draw the inseam line. We're going to need to use the ruler to connect from the waistline to the hip line and then we're going to use the French curve to draw a nice curve on the crotch line right there. And we're also going to use it to put in the hip curve for the outside. So we're using the ruler here to just draw from the waistline to the hip line and then we're using the French curve to blend that line in with the crotch line which would be the inseam. So we're just smoothing it in nicely and then we're going to connect that crotch line to the thigh line. Then we're going to complete the out seam of the shorts by adding a hip curve. This is the front of our shorts. Now we're going to do the same thing on the back of the shorts. We're going to divide in half the waistline and the hip line, draw a line and get ready to establish our dart. The back dart needs to be four inches long. So we're going to mark that four inch and it needs to be one inch wide. So that would be half inch on one side and half inch on the other side. Once we've marked that in, we can go ahead and draw our dart legs. So this is where you check to see how much extra do you need to get rid of off of your back waist. So we knew for sure that the waist circumference divided by four is what we're working with. So it seems for me here that I need to get rid of at least an inch and a quarter more. So I'm dividing an inch and a quarter by two on the tape measure and for that I get five eighths. So I am just marking in my five eighths, five eighths from the out seam and five eighths from the inseam. And then I'm going to use my ruler to connect the waist to the hip. This is the out seam of the back. So waist to hip and then we use the French curve to blend in with that crotch line right there. And then we're also going to use the French curve to complete the out seam. And of course, connect the crotch line to the thigh line. We're going to label and make sure that we know that this is the front of the shorts and this is the back. For the waistband, draw a rectangle that is a length equal to your waistline divided by two, but be sure to add an extra half inch because you will need to have that for allowance. The width of your rectangle should be five inches. So here I'm just establishing that rectangle. I started off with a vertical line first and then I squared out from that the five inches on both sides and now I'm completing the rectangle. And I'm going to indicate on the pattern that this should be placed on a fold. So when you're cutting it out from the fabric, make sure this part, the symbol that has the fold is on a folded side of the fabric. So when you hold out the fabric itself, you're going to find that it's actually two times the length of this and I'm also drawing down the center of the waistband because you know the waistband is going to be folded in half so I'm just putting that as an indication and labeling that this is the waistband your fly piece should be nine inches long the width should be four inches because this is gonna be something that's folded in half. So when it's folded in half, we're going to get two inches. We're going to draw down the center of it so that we know say yeah, this is something that should be folded in half. And we're going to label this fly piece A. This should usually go on the left side of your shorts. And then we're gonna draw fly piece B, which is also nine inches long, but it's only two inches wide. It's a simple rectangle, but we're going to complete that fly piece by using our French curve to add a nice little curve down there. That's the J. So this usually goes on the right side of your shorts. Now it's time to cut everything out. Yay! But hold on guys, don't move to the body of the shirt just yet. Just cut out the fly piece A, fly piece B, and the waistband because I have a correction coming up. Yeah. 
before you actually cut out the shorts body you need to lower your front inseam by half inch and raise your back inseam by half inch and this needs to be done because on the back of your body there's your booty that needs to be compensated for which is a lot more bulk than on your front which is flat so once you've done that you're going to actually connect those lines so the front will slope in and the back will slope up With this last step, we can finally complete the pattern. So what I'm doing here is actually marking half of an inch all the way around the pattern. This is going to be the seam allowance. Because you know, of course, if you should actually attempt to stitch these shorts without having any allowance, your shorts will end up a lot smaller than you and we don't want that. For the out seam, we don't have enough space to actually draw seam alone so what we're going to do is to just cut the shorts out just as it is and indicate on the pattern that we need to add half inch allowance when we're cutting it from the fabric but if you don't want to have to do that you can actually cut out these patterns and just trace it over on different pattern paper so that you will have it with the allowance already drawn now that we've done all of that, we can finally just cut out the shorts once and for all. Remember, if you want to have your out seam seam allowance already there, then you should just cut this out and trace it over on different pattern paper to make sure you have that set for yourself. Otherwise, just go ahead and cut out the pattern and make sure that you indicate that you should add half of an inch. Right now we're trimming the patterns, just putting the back to the front to make sure that the curves match up. And if they don't, you want to just make sure that you're trimming what needs to be trimmed. And that's a wrap. Join me again next week so we can transform the pattern we just drafted into these beautiful high-waisted shorts. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so when I do post that video, you'll be notified.